What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to be talking about Scream 7 in this video here today. This will mostly be a theory to discuss what I could see playing out in Scream 7 potentially. Scream 7 is coming February of 2026 and official news is likely right around the corner with filming expected to start in less than three months. Kevin Williamson we know will be directing, Guy Busick is writing, and Nev Campbell is set to return as Sidney Prescott who will lead the story once again. We know Sydney's teenage daughter, Taylor, possibly named Tatum or something else, is going to be at the center of this narrative as well. She has a boyfriend named Brian and is quite rebellious due to Sydney being overprotective. She more than likely has a small friend group as well. And there's apparently a cute neighbor who is the son to Sydney's friend named Jennifer. However, what could possibly be going on that inspires another round of Ghostface shenanigans? Screen five and six to me plant seeds for what seven can explore. Five and six put a spotlight on these unhealthy attachments to film franchises and film in general, where you could argue characters like Amber, Richie, even Jason and Greg from the beginning of six couldn't care less about the real world damage these sprees have caused for countless families. Seven can give us a group of killers who are tired of the glorification, stab, Gale Weathers, and everything in between that works real hard to keep the impacts on the families under the rug while endlessly propping up criminals, resulting in some even developing crushes on these killers, looking up to them, etc. Taylor's friend, Holly, who has been described as the rich queen bee of the group, can be extremely into the real tragedies behind the Stab franchise, going as far to host a podcast dedicated to bringing on guests to discuss what made Billy, Stu, Roman, Jill, and every other killer snap beyond the motives they revealed. Holly also has been making some insensitive comments during these shows. Taylor has been a frequent guest on the podcast, using her status as Sydney's daughter to help bring in a bigger audience for Holly. This was intended to be a secret since Sydney doesn't bother to keep up with anything Ghostface related if she doesn't have to. However, upon discovering what Taylor has been doing on Holly's podcast, this triggered her overprotective tendencies to become more exaggerated. Taylor can't go out past a certain hour. She can't stay at her boyfriend's for too long, etc. All because Sydney isn't pleased with Taylor going on that podcast. In my head, Holly is our perfect opening victim for this for this theory of mine to work. It's night. We're at the Prescott house. Sydney and her husband are about to leave for date night. Taylor is being instructed to take good care of her little sister. But when Sydney leaves, Holly is let in to watch the sibling while Taylor sneaks off to meet Brian, leaving the back door unlocked since she doesn't plan to stay gone long. Now, we don't need a phone call or anything. You don't need any of the tr traditional stuff. Shake the formula up. Several shots of Ghostface lurking without Holly knowing should be enough to build tension and switch up that formula in a way that we've never seen before there is no opening phone call in scream 2 so it could be a callback to scream 2 if you will holly is inevitably attacked and killed but ghostface is the one to call the cops and get them to sydney's house upon arriving ghostface reveals themselves and it's someone related to let's say cotton weary we're left in shock with several questions to build interest in what's happening you get your title card and what I'd have occurring throughout the rest of the film is you'd have relatives of past victims purposely getting caught in an effort to draw attention to the families that no one in the media ever cares to pay attention to. Taylor and her friends are targets because they are complicit in Holly's podcast, gaining the momentum that it did. In the end, we find out Sydney's friend isn't exactly who she says she is. It is Leslie Mocker. Now, you guys know I've been honing in on Leslie Mocker for quite some time. I am still sticking to that. I'm just coming up with some more ways you could introduce such a narrative with Leslie still at the center of it all. Leslie organized this group after losing Vince to connect with other Woodsboro Ghostface people who have lost someone due to these sprees. They bonded over their shared trauma, frustration with the media's glorification, and how society just pays more attention to the criminals than the innocent lives lost. Holly's podcast Unfortunately, noticed by these group of people led by Leslie who do not like what Holly has been saying on this podcast. And they decided that enough is enough. They need to make a stand and there needs to be some sort of balance in the media's coverage and what they talk about. Because obviously you cannot completely wipe out the glorification of these killers, but it's time for the victims' families to start being considered in this coverage. Start paying attention to what has been transpiring with people connected to the victims how have their lives been shaped the media never talks about that leslie though in particular 
isn't necessarily wanting that as much as she's trying to end this once and for all. Leslie's motive is more so rooted in this idea that if I eliminate Sydney Prescott, that should put an end to this once and for all, and there should be no, no more ghost face killing sprees. She herself is willing to get caught for it as well. These people basically have nothing to live for. So what they're trying to do is be the voice for the voiceless. In this case, it's some, some sick form of twisted activism, if you will. And as a result, if they are all successful in what they are accomplishing, you will have a, a group of Ghostface killers, a cult, if you will, who have successfully gotten the attention they desperately wanted from the media as it pertains to drawing a light on the Becker family, the Weary family, several other people who have just been swept under the rug while we're constantly glorifying Billy, Stu, Roman, Jill, everybody else who are the criminals but no one wants to talk about the families and how they are impacted. That is what I could see transpiring in Scream 7. My only thing is you definitely need to come up with something that puts Sydney in a position where she starts off in a certain starts off with a certain error or certain path that needs to be resolved by the end of the movie. And if it's just being too overprotective of Taylor, I don't really think that would be the most compelling thing to watch her overcome to stop being overprotective of Taylor. If anything, I, I would imagine this would only make her double down on it. So that's my biggest fear when it comes to Scream 7 is what is it that Sydney is overcoming as opposed to what we see her overcoming in Scream 1, Scream 2, Scream 3. There's just clear things that show some sort of growth or shift in her as a character. What is that shift going to be for Sydney in Scream 7? by the end of it all but you guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below i'm aware that some of you probably won't like what i had to say some of you will find it to be interesting you probably flesh it out a little bit more down in the comment section below i think that it has a lot of potential i'm sure someone else out there probably has come up with something similar or maybe you've thought about it i just think that this would be the appropriate way to go if you were to tackle glorification and address the fact that the media never really talks about the victims of or the families of these victims it's always swept under the rug and a group of people got tired of it and they took matters into their own hands and obviously having killers reveal themselves is a definitely a formula sh shift they're willing to get caught all in the sake of getting attention to those families that are never talked about that is their motivation whereas leslie herself just wants to eliminate sydney prescott because she doesn't think sydney deserves the life that she has she doesn't deserve to have her daughter she doesn't deserve to have peace she doesn't deserve anything of the sort and if she continues to exist more sprees will just continue to happen let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and never miss video in the description i have links to all of my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video